Hello, my fellow chairs, and welcome back to EU4. Today, we are going to be continuing our mission tree only series where we play within the confines of a nation's mission tree without expanding outside of that mission tree. Today, we are going to be playing as the nation of Songhai. Songhai is often considered to be the Prussia of West Africa with ideas that feature infantry combat ability, army tradition discipline, morale of armies, fort defense, and then they also have some good trade stuff like global trade power. Uh, caravan power and then they also have in other ideas like institution spread which is the other good one and then lackluster ideas like prestige and counts are true faith but this nation received a huge update in the origins dlc so without wasting any more time let's get into it as song high so as song high we start out with 9k guys both our ruler and our heir are extremely old they're not going to live that much longer economically meh Institution wise, we don't even have feudalism. That's how far behind we are in terms of tech and all that stuff. But our mission tree will guide us towards getting feudalism for free and expanding all, aqua all across West Africa and also into the Maghreb region as well. This side of our mission tree, the far right side, is all about economic development. The middle portion is all about conquest of West Africa and the Maghreb. And the left area, uh, left portion of the mission tree is all about reforming your army and your government to basically make your troops even stronger than they already are. However, looking at some of these early on missions, the easiest ones to do are like improve bureaucracy where we just have to get nine admin a month. So easiest way to do that, focus on admin. War reps, we're going to do number of generals plus one and we're going to build the free company. And this one we have to wait till we get to admin tech six or seven till we could get workshops. In terms of rivals, we're just gonna rival the nations like that rivaled us, like Fada and Gorma, Ayer, and Jene. And in terms of estate stuff, I am gonna go ahead. I'm not gonna add cheaper advisor ones just yet because we are gonna be losing a ton of stab at the start of the game. However, I will do clerical ministers, enforce unity of faith, expansion of zealotry, religious diplomats and also clerical education as for our emirs we're going to do increased levies uh and emir officer rights our merchant guilds i'm going to go ahead and give them patronage of the arts indebted to the merchant guilds and promote merchant guilds bookkeeping and actually you know what i'm also going to give our ulema religious state and i'm going to go ahead and seize land and uh we will go ahead and hire the free company that's going to put us over our force limit by one do grant generalship let's see what type of general we get meh a 131 a ruler and error not much better since we are a sultanate we're actually one of the few in west africa uh, we get access to the big three buttons here. We're going to go with land acquisition for that core creation cost. I'm also going to go ahead and ally Kanem Bornu. Kanem Bornu is actually a really good ally to have. Probably going to ally somebody else like Benin if I potentially can. Or Zazal might even be a decent ally. And because I already built up my army to 100%. We got a general. I could complete war preparations. Giving me a bunch of permanent claims on Timbuktu, Ayer, and also central west africa and this one right here timbuktu this is going to be kind of the more important one for me to do right away and also stopping the air raids which is kind of funny because obviously there's no planes in 1444 but we're going to try and take care of both of these nations realistically they're really the only threat to our sovereignty meanwhile a nation like mali who you would think would be the big threat they're about to start exploding literally at the start of the game so December 11th rolls around, we are going to go ahead and plunge ourselves into war with Timbuktu as long as they don't have too many allies. Same thing with Ayer. And Timbuktu actually allied Mali, and Ayer is allied to Kano and Yao. So I guess we'll just kind of chill for right now. Or actually, screw it. We'll just go ahead and attack Timbuktu. Because I don't think Mali's really going to be able to handle fighting us and dealing with the rebels. Sure enough, our 74-year-old heir died, and he got replaced by 535, who is 12 years old. Oh, man, that's actually really good. Normally, I get another old heir. <laughs> and without having to fight a single battle against Mali here, I could just piece them out. Because, look, they have rebels. They're, they're not doing too good. They're really not feeling too good. So there we go. They're out. And, uh, yeah, it's just Timbuktu, which we have 100% war score on. We should be able to full annex these guys. 
And we can immediately complete the mission. Conquer Timbuktu, which gives us a decision to colonize this province at Tawat, which we're not going to waste any time doing. Uh, at least not yet. Not until I could see more of the Maghreb. And this will give us permanent claims on our boy Mali over here and also on Jenne, which we will invade Jenne very soon. Now that we are gaining nine admin a month and we have at least 25 government pro uh, reform progress, we can now complete this mission, giving us feudalism in our capital of Gao and also our second largest province of Azawag over here. And we could go ahead and embrace feudalism, which is great because now we are like literally the only nation over here that actually has feudalism. And I won't have to pay a any type of penalty to get to level tech three or mill tech four. All right, we are going to go ahead and start another war this time against Jenny, who Kong and Jolof would be the only nations to actually join this war. But I'm going to show you guys something that's actually really cool about Songhai and Jenny. Uh, once we take their capital, of course. So as you guys can see, I'm losing my negative two war score right now, but I just got this event. So when you take Jenny's capital. You actually get this event where you just marry them and you can make them into a vassal with a white piece. Otherwise, you could keep this thing just going and get prestige. I'm going to go with that top option because that's fantastic. And honestly, Jenny's a really good subject because they do bring about 10 to 12,000 troops to any single fight. And then what we are going to do is we're actually going to wait another three years and then we're going to go ahead and attack Molly, who, as I mentioned earlier, they're just collapsing in on themselves. I can also complete this mission, Conquer Jenne, which converts their capital of Jenne over to Sunni, and they get a bunch of dev in their capital. Our truce with Mali is over, so we're just going to go straight into attacking them. I'll call my boy Oyo to help me out against Yatenga, and we're going to full annex Yatenga as well. Alright, Yatenga is wiped out. And as for Mali, I'm just taking these three provinces, money, war reps. And now we could go ahead and complete this mission, giving us Frontier on uh, this area where Fulo would normally be in EU4, but guess what? It's all ours now. We don't even have to worry about Fulo ever popping up. The mission right after that is taking the Empire title, which just requires us to have 25,000 troops, have an armor army larger than or equal to Mali's, which they have only have eight, uh, prestige higher than Mali's, which is negative 95, and stability higher than Mali, which is negative one for them. So uh, yeah, I don't, I don't think we'll have to worry about that. Let's go ahead and core all this stuff up, and we're gonna focus in on conquering Ayer, Wagadagu, and Fada and Gorma. As for our tier two government reform, we're just gonna go with strength and noble privileges. Manpower is a rarity in this area. This area is notorious for having the worst supply in the entire game. But uh, if you're somebody that has an institution, you don't want any of your neighbors to get it. In my case, feudalism then what you could actually do is set yourself hostile towards them or rival those nations and it will actually limit the spread of an institution to those countries so you will forever be ahead of those nations all right i think it's time we take out fada and gorma we're going to call on kanam bornu they're going to help us out with zazao uh, this will also call on bonoman and dahomey we're also a whole mil tech ahead of all these guys so let's do it Stack wipes for day. Let's go for this 9k stack. That should also be a stack wipe. Yep, perfect. And we'll go straight for the homies army. These homies can't run away from Song High. And do they actually have Miltech 3? No, they don't, but they have good troops. I'm also going to go ahead and set my subject of Jenny here to actually go to Siege. They're going to do all the attritioning for me while I go off and build up my army tradition by fighting battles. And our ruler, who was 64 years old, finally died. We got this really good air, or now this 535 in charge. We just have to deal with these stupid pretender rebels. I'm also going to do a big brain move here. I'm going to call Oyo into this war. I'm about to win this war against uh, Fada and Gorma, but they're allied to Wagadagu. So now they no longer will be called into this war, and I could basically just beat up on Wagadagu like it's, you know, without having to deal with a pretty strong nation on my border. Alright, and that plan worked out perfectly as now I could go ahead full annex Wagadagu and Fada and Gorma. But I'm just going to go ahead and take money and war reps from Bottleman. And then now I'm going to go ahead and full annex Fada and Gorma. 
We can now complete this mission, eliminate the Mossy threat, giving us 20 army tradition, which uh, currently we are at 46. And we are going to chill for a little bit here. My, my free company, completely out of manpower. I'm completely out of manpower. And I have to start focusing in on this mission here, army professionalism, where I need 30 army professionalism. So I'm going to hold off on taking this unless I drop below 30 army tradition. All right, so we can finally choose our very first idea group, which I'm just going to go ahead and choose innovative ideas. This is going to uh, help us stay on par in terms of tech. And later on, I will be choosing quality ideas to stack up well with that infantry combat ability that are already in our ideas. Uh, so we're going to have some really, really strong infantry. Uh, basically, we're going to go all in on our military. Luckily for me, I can also get the Renaissance from Tafilat. Let's do that. It's going to put me way ahead of all my African neighbors here. Tier 3 government reform. We're just going to go with Expanded Royal Court for that reform progress growth. All right, and I have 25,000 troops on in the field right now, so I can now take the Empire title. We're going to become an Empire, get permanent claims on a bunch of areas, and Mali's going to lose even more stability. Let's go ahead and get the Renaissance. Miltech 6 and now we're actually caught up in tech With that being said we are going to go ahead and attack the nation of Ayer. uh i was actually kind of hoping joloff would join but they're kind of facing a bunch of rebels so they're not going to be able to join at all and with Ayer out of the way we can finally complete our mission air raids uh which allows us to colonize this area so we can actually get to north africa we also get stability and we also, because I accept Targ as an accepted culture, uh, we actually get an extra 100 Diplo instead. And now we're going to start focusing on this area over here. Alright, we're going to quickly attack the nation of Kong who is at war with Jolof. I don't want them to expand anymore whatsoever. Uh, so yeah, we're going to just try and take all the stuff that we have claims on where, where Molly was at. We actually have a core here. I mean, it is part of all this stuff. So let's go ahead and attack these guys. You know, the, yeah, the little Colin Kano. We could probably break some alliances with them. In this war, I'm just going to be taking these two provinces that I have claims on. Which, I mean, I'm only going to be coring one. Also, our ruler died at this time. So we got our 464. We're also going to be getting an event for a really good ruler at some point. And I also see Joloff's actually... They're going to get full annexed here. And I'm going to be bordering the Spanish. I really don't want to be bordering the Spanish, especially right now, but uh, this is going to be bad. I'm also going to go down the conversion path. I feel like that's the most stable route for this area here. There's so many different cultures and whatnot. And honestly, the best way to keep on down is to make sure everything's of your religion. We're just going to go ahead and choose the conversion path number one, which just requires us to convert every single province in Mulsi. Yeah, sure enough, Castile actually took two provinces here. Oh, and they're allied to Burgundy. That is not good. And Tafalot? Oh. Yeah, they, they're they they're looking pretty strong already. Finally, with Mali completely out of the picture, we can complete Eradicate Mali, giving us permanent claims on the Jolof area that Castile owns and pretty much the rest of uh, West Africa. And uh, Castile just attacked me. They have almost 40,000 troops, and I'm assuming Tafalot's here? No, not yet. I might have to hire mercs if they land over here. But I think we could actually win this if I take these two provinces before they get down here. If Tafalot joins this war, I might be screwed. I did end up hiring some mercs, but the uh, Castilians are actually about to land here. We do outnumber them almost two to one, and I'm on par with them now militarily in terms of technology. So let's see how this battle goes. I got the better discipline. They have way better morale than me, of course. But our troops are a little bit better than theirs. Just because uh, we have the numbers. But we are going to try and march or follow these guys. I, I'd imagine they're probably retreating like really far over here. Which I hate having to walk through here to do that. And sure enough, there they are. And they're about to retreat. So let's just march all the way back up here. Okay, so outside of that like first battle... Uh, Castile never decided to land over here again, and I just sat here on their two provinces, and that was that. So I can actually take the two provinces and about 36 ducats. And that makes me really happy now. 
because now we are immediately kicked the Europeans out of West Africa, at least for now, until they start colonizing this coastline. Then things get to be a little bit of a challenge. But what I'm going to do right now is we're going to chill for a little bit until our truce with Kong is up, and it's going to give me a little bit more manpower, and we're going to go on a full-on uh, campaign of just con conquering all of the Niger region, pushing all the way over to my ally of Khan of Bornu. And what I need to do is start... Well, I'm not actually going to make contact with the Maghreb, which does complete this mission, which gives me permanent claims up here. We're not going to do that just yet until we consolidate our rule over this area here. Tier 4 government reform, we're going to go with strengthen the Ulema, which gives us additional missionary strength. Very much needed, as you guys can see. I have a ton of stuff I have to convert. Our religious unities around 52, which is a problem because we get a lot more unrest, corruption, and stability costs. So, yeah, we got a lot of things that we have to convert. And once I annex my boy Jenna over here, I actually get an additional missionary once I upgrade the Great Mosque of Jen at least one more time. Historical ruler. Actually, I mean, our current ruler is really good though too, but he, this guy's better in both admin and mill, which I have ideas in. Meanwhile, Diplo, not so important right now. So, yeah, I'll take, I'll take the stab hit on this guy. Time to invade Kong and their ally uh kano would actually not join so let's go ahead full annex these guys oh apparently now i know about the maghreb which is completely dominated by portugal uh yeah we'll complete this mission which as i mentioned earlier does give me permanent claims all the way up here realistically i'm gonna have to ally somebody like the mamlux or uh tunis i don't know if i can get the mamlux probably not i might be able to get tunis though Finally, we finished up innovative ideas, giving us the cheaper advisors, plus we got an additional 10% morale of armies. So now we have 406 in terms of morale, a little bit closer to where Castile was at. I'm also going to go ahead and choose my very first age ability, which our capital is in steps. There's not really a lot of steps over here. I think, honestly, improved war taxes is probably going to be the best one, 100% uh, free war taxes. So let's do that. And since my ruler is freaking awesome and I completed innovative ideas, I could actually get this to the end of the game, uh, giving me cheaper idea cost, 5%. Not too bad. All right, we're going to start our next war, this time against Dagban, who is allied to Zazal and Bidin. I'm going to co-belligerent both nations as I plan on full annexing Dagban, taking two provinces from Benin, and full annexing Zazal. Also, our truce with Castile is over, which I'm assuming they're probably going to attack me sooner, sooner rather than later, especially because I'm low on manpower. So I'm going to let my allies mainly do most of the sieging in this war. I'll fight the battles since I'm at Miltech 7. These guys are at like 5, 6, 4, whatever and stuff. So I could easily stack wipe them quick battles. I think I'm also going to be building a fort over here in like Wolof. Uh, it's... You know, right in that area that Castile typically lands in, and it's right off the coast, so they can't use their boats to actually prevent that fort from being, you know, get any additional bonuses. Plus, I have fort defense in my ideas, so it's going to make it really hard for them to, to take that fort, and it'll be in Savannah, which means, guess what? There's, like, no supply here. There's already no supply down in this area anyways. This is going to make it even harder on them. All right, with that war taken care of, we're going to go ahead and attack the nation of Kano here. Go belligerent noob, go belligerent Katsina. And uh, we're just going to full annex these last three nations. At some point, I'm going to have to go to war with my boy Kanem Bornu. And I'm probably going to end up having to take expansion ideas just to get the last remaining claims I have over here. So, uh, yeah, let's do this. Let's hope. Castile doesn't have any bright ideas seeing I start a war with like no manpower, but eh, let's just give it a try. And like that, we have pretty much united most of West Africa, at least the things that we have claims on for right now. I don't think we really get claims to go into the Maghreb until later. Or excuse me, I don't think we get claims to go over here into the Sahel region any further till potentially later, which I don't even... I don't even see that, but I do see this mission, which wants me to own 150 provinces, like, in Africa, be in the Sahel, Niger, Maghreb, and Guinea, and we have to be at least uh, number four great power in the world. So, guess I could technically take these last remaining nations over, but again, I don't have any claims on them, so I'm not going to do that, except Kanem Bornu a little bit later. 
I mean, if I could just simply vassalize them, that would be freaking awesome. But uh, yeah, we're not going to be doing that either. What we are going to be doing is focusing on all of our economic missions and our military stuff. I have to get that army professionalism up to at least 30%. And then later on, I have to do this mission, which requires me to win like a ton of battles. I get more professionalism. And uh, yeah, we got to convert a bunch of things. And uh, I'm sure we'll probably complete most of this as we go into conquering the Maghreb. But not bad, honestly. We pretty much united all of West Africa by 1504. I could have done it faster if it wasn't for like the Castilian War. And I kind of took my time because of the manpower. I didn't want to leave myself to be too weak since I have so many rebels. As you guys can see on the side of my screen, the unrest in this area is horrible. And because I dominate trade in Timbuktu, I'm going to set this to propagate religion. That's going to help me out. And then I think I could, yeah, I could do the same thing here with Katsina because I own more than 50%. So just to get these provinces converted even faster, I will gladly give up some trade power for uh, conversion. One thing I have to do too is I have to core up a lot of this stuff. Uh, that's part of the reason why I'll be able to for one, convert a lot of things faster, and for two, some of these areas have gold mines, so I gotta make sure I, make, I state this up, lower the autonomy, this is gonna boost up our economy regardless, extra money and manpower is always nice. I'm gonna go ahead and ally Tafelot, because they are allied to both Castile and Portugal, which means we'll probably be getting things like colonialism and printing press way before I do. Uh, I'm thinking we're gonna use a lot of our Diplo to actually culture convert many of these provinces to something more favorable that's uh within our culture group or even in tarig and stuff like that because we need to otherwise i'm just going to keep getting rebel bombed for the remainder of this game and i would prefer not to even though it does give me some extra army professionalism i would prefer not to always have to fight rebels for the remainder of the game finally after building 10 workshops i can now get i guess just the yearly income from building them. Sure, 41 ducats, I'll take it. Our next mission down the economic path, we have to have three own provinces that produce salt with at least 10 dev, and three own provinces that produce cloth with at least 20 dev. All right, now I'm gonna begin the integration process of my subject gene. This is gonna take us about five years. I'm also going to be taking the nobility integration policy, so that's going to speed this up a little bit. And I'm not going to get that diplo rep penalty. So I actually ended up just stating up everything over here because I realized my gov cap was actually super high. Uh, I didn't. And I, I'm assuming the reason I could kind of get away with that is because everything over here is like super low dev, other than obviously this chain of or belt of provinces all around the niger river so yeah might, might as well I, I think it's a good idea all right i finally converted all mosi so they all lose 100 autonomy for the next uh 30 years they also lose 10 separatism i guess also this mission was done because my lemma's influence is greater than 40 they have three privileges so this increases their loyalty we actually get cheaper tech for the next uh 25 years and tolerance of true faith and this next mission invites scholars. I have to have at least three nations with me that have 150 uh, opinion of me. Ooh, Tafilat wants to give me colonialism. Yes, please. It's, it's going to speed this up by like 40 years. That's awesome. For a tier five government reform, I'm going to go with sustained discipline. It's going to give us even more army drill game modifier and all that stuff. I need to constantly have my armies just drilling. Because I need the army professionalism, so might as well actually make use of that. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and colonize both Tuat, which is this here, and the corridor next to Fazan. So now, yeah, I border both Tafela, my ally, and Fazan, who just found out I existed. And now this mission here wants me to actually own every province in the Sahel, Niger, and Guinea region and convert it over to Sunni. So, I mean, I could technically just leave it as, well, I was going to say I could leave it as is, but my boy Conan Bornu, I didn't realize was converted to fetishist. So, yeah, we, 
it, it it's time to conquer all of the Sahel at this point, and uh, I think I, it requires me to own Benin as well, right? Sahel, Niger, or Guinea region. So yeah, I have to conquer Benin, and probably anybody who colonizes this coastline. For my third idea group, that's right, we are on to our third one here. I'm actually going to open up with Diplo ideas here. Uh, this this way, I could potentially ally some of Castile's rivals, like, uh, I don't know, maybe like France. Maybe even Britain might like me a little bit later on. And uh, again, just to secure some sort of alliances. I mean, heck, if I'm able to get the Ottomans, that would be amazing. That would literally make it super easy. Alternatively, I mean, I could go with exploration or expansion ideas, which I mean... You know what? I'm going to go with expansion ideas. We're going to drop Diplo for right now. We're just going to take expansion, get the colonists, colonize the coastline, and then I'll start um, doing Diplo. I'll exchange them out for Diplo later. In terms of uh, colonization policy, we're going to choose the one where we high-five everybody that we uh, decide to colonize. And once this truce with Benin's over, we're going to attack them. I'm going to vassalize these guys. I don't feel like using my admin to actually core that stuff. And then we're going to attack Khanna Bornu and do the same thing. And we'll attack Funj immediately afterwards. So I'm assuming Khanna Bornu probably, yeah, they have claims there. Oh, would you look at that? The Ashanti are here. Isn't that interesting? I was just wondering about these guys. I could actually conquer them right away. So yeah, we'll we'll do Benin first and we'll go to Ashanti. Would you guys look at that? Khanna Bornu is actually in a civil war. So uh, yeah, I think they need the right leadership, a.k.a. me. To come in, vassalize them, and put them back on the right track. Oh, what you looking at? And Funj is actually at war with uh, Khanum Bornu also, so this works out perfectly. I'll be immediately plunged into war against them. And I think we have to full annex them. Yeah, because they're part of the Sahel. So their entire country is about to be mine. So, uh, my worst nightmare had happened. I mean, for once, I mean, for one, there's Mega France who decided to actually rival me. Mega France decided to colonize it next to me. And I probably have to take over that stupid island to complete this mission. I do. To conquer these two islands. I have to annex both Benin and Khan Bornu. Surprisingly, I don't need this, but I do need this province from Portugal. Oh, man. That's horrifying. And like the fact that France actually got Aragon on her PU as well. That's even more disgusting. And they have Russia under a PU? Dude. Oh no. Poor Austria is at war with the Protestants now. Oh my god. That's disgusting. Meanwhile, like, oh. I mean, I guess at least France is out of manpower, but still. That's, that's just horrible to look at. Okay, I finally built up to my force summit so that I could complete the army professionalism mission. I have about 34 army professionalism, 40 army tradition, we just need a 30. Let's go ahead and complete this. Reforms. Yeah, we're going to go with that top option. The bottom one's also good, but I'm ahead of Miltech, so we're just going to go with this. Discipline army tradition. To the death of our ruler. Okay. Next up, we have to win over 30 battles. If we win a battle with our ruler, uh, it actually counts as double, so instead of just counting as one battle, it would be two so we fought 15 battles and won all of them with our ruler uh we would actually be able to complete this mission right away and we could focus we could do focus on professional army army tradition and then from there it's all about having a high army tradition and army professionalism and uh yeah we get some really good permanent bonuses okay so i finally dev the those salt provinces and they give me extra global trade power and goods produced for the next 25 years this mission here basically these three gold mine provinces have to have at least 10 production I'm also building a couple marketplaces here as part of that mission as well okay i'm thinking we're actually going to go ahead and attack tafalot over here that's going to come both castile and portugal but i'm going to i'm just going to say it i think my guys are a little bit better than theirs this is my actually my first battle in this war. We have better discipline than the Portuguese. They have a little bit better morale. But uh, we're... But we're one whole mil tech out of these guys. 
And uh, yeah, we'll actually be able to stack wipe them because I took all the forts up here. And because that was with my ruler, I should have won four battles at this point. Eight battles, apparently. I, I mean, okay. I don't mind. I'll, I'll take eight battles. <laughs> okay, so in this war, I'm not going to take any land. Uh, I'm actually just going to make them break their lands with Castile and Portugal. That should hopefully make Portugal, at the very least, more hostile towards Tafalal. Uh, hopefully... Ottomans don't ally them. That would be a, my worst nightmare at that point. But I'll take that for right now. Fourth idea group time. We're just going to do offensive ideas. Keep stacking the military bonuses. Better generals. Better discipline. That's what we're going to need against all these European nations. Especially if I'm to fight France later on. Who's actually friendly to me now. Sure I'll make a deal with the devil himself. Why not? Tier 7 government reform, we're going to go with meritocratic recruitment, cheap advisors, less corruption, perfect. Finally, I got all three of my gold mines up to 10 production. Two of them at one point both lost production, so I had to basically start at 5, five production dev again. We're going to do this. We can now do controlled gold mining with our merchant guild. Basically, we make a little bit less uh, money, but we take less inflation and there's a lower chance that these provinces lose their gold uh, or lose production over here. All right, let's go ahead and attack Tafalalt again. This time we're actually going to be able to take land from these guys. We'll be able to complete that mission to win 30 battles, which we just need to win seven more. In this war against Tafalalt, we're just going to do this type of peace deal just to get us up here into Morocco. We're going to core all this stuff up and our next war will actually be against the Portuguese, uh, what I could call the French. I could actually ally Great Britain who's not allied to the French. So let me go ahead and do that. Well, I'm kind of tempted to curry favors with them so I could, before I attack Portugal, I probably should get them to break their alliance. I'm one whole tech ahead both Portugal and Castile so I want to try and attack them soon finally it's time to annex my boy Benin it's gonna boost up our trade power over in Ivory Coast but quite a bit because they do have uh, an estuary and an entrepot all right so I upgrade a ton of my trade centers I was actually able to get my trade power up to 25 percent in Ivory Coast we have 91 percent up here in Timbuktu and that allows us to complete this mission, protect the West African trade, 85% at least in Timbuktu, 25% or more in Ivory Coast, and 25% or more in Katsina, while no European nation has 20% in any of those trade nodes. We also get additional trade power in those trade nodes till the end of the game, and we get national unrest and goods produced for the next 25 years. And for us to complete the, uh, basically the economic missions for us here, we just have to have 50% or more trade power in in a uh, European trade node. All right, first battle against the Spanish. We're gonna be fight, uh, fighting a defensive battle in the Highlands. We're probably gonna be outnumbered because Portugal's probably gonna help out their ally here. Sure enough, they're force marching. Our guys have better discipline on par in terms of morale, but we have better generals. And the terrain, nope, yeah, no, we're, we're about to lose that battle. All right, let's get out of there. If I had my other army not in Ethiopia, we probably would have won that battle. Tier 8 government reform. Uh, we'll do embrace economic theory. We have a lot of gold mines, so might as well get that inflation down. So I just sold off some titles, uh, and then I bumped up my trust with France a little bit. Now I can actually call them into this war. And now Castile and Burgundy are about to get absolutely just demolished by the French. Alright, first battle against the Ethiopians. Yeah, absolutely demolish them. Let's take out their capital, get them out of the war so I can bring this army back up and around to help out North Africa. All right, let's war with Portugal. I'm going to piece out Castile separately to get the province of Arguin over here, kick, officially kicking them completely out of West Africa. So for Senor Portugal, we can actually take all of Morocco from them once we get the war score. Oh, and I need this island over here too, uh, which I believe is Arguin. Or Cabo Verde. We can also completely kick Portugal out of West Africa and then also up in Morocco. 
So now I got I completed Invade Maghreb, which now I have permanent claims on the rest of Maghreb, which is basically just Tafalalt and Portuguese Maghreb. I did end up diplomatically vassalizing these three and stuff, so there was no bloodshed there. So yeah, we just have to fight Portugal and Tafalalt and take like these islands away from Castile, Portugal. All right, I'm gonna launch a quick war against Tafalalt. We may or may not be able to full annex them. They might just, yeah, they're, we're going to just try and take their coast so Portugal or France can't invade them. I also completed the Consolidate Maghreb mission just by owning 40 provinces up here, giving me 100 monarch points in every category. Army tradition war. Obviously, I'm going to take their islands away from them. Then we're going to wipe peace out Portugal to reset our truce. All right, so in this war with Castile, I'm going to give France these two provinces. I'm just going to take their two islands. Boom. Again, I just mainly want to do that war for the army uh tradition and then we'll be invading portugal in a couple of years which will call them both ethiopia and castile and we'll beat up their armies again so i could get even more army tradition but i think that time i'll do it myself and that way france and britain don't steal my army tradition all right truce with portugal's over we're gonna just go ahead and begin our invasion and uh we'll beat up on castile again but uh we'll do this for Tlemcen. So that way we don't have to land on any islands. I actually completed the Market in Europe mission because I full occupy both Sevilla. Well, I full occupy both Castile and Portugal, giving me 55% trade over here. So now I get 15 mercantilism. I don't know if it's necessarily worth it, but I mean the mercantilism is nice because it does increase your overall trade power per prov like your province's trade power and value, especially if you do it plan to expand up here in the Sevilla to cut off a, a lot of that trade in Genoa. Obviously mission tree only, we can't do that. Uh, we're basically just confined to just North Africa at this point in terms of expansion. And uh, at some point we're going to have to turn our backs on the French. And we are so close to that 75 army tradition. Isn't it? Keep fighting more and more battles. All right, this war with Portugal, we're taking their two islands and we're going to conquer the rest of North Africa. So now it's completely under our control, and I'm going to start integrating some of my subjects here. Uh, I'm also going to start a war against Elodia over here. They're calling Ethiopia. We're going to fight every one of these battles. I am so close to getting that extra five army tradition. I need it. So uh, let's go ahead and do this war really fast. Just to show you guys how strong my army actually is, we're going to march these 30,000 troops into Ethiopia's 51,000 guys. I have 123% discipline. Morale is at 5.64, obviously army tradition as I mentioned earlier, very close to 75. Inner infantry combat abilities up to 35% with almost 100% army professionalism. Let's see how this goes, oh man yeah we're just we're just demolishing them. They have good uh, discipline as well too. Our guys are just way better than theirs. Finally I got my army up to 75 army tradition. I had to kill a bunch of rebels just to do it. And I am on par with everybody in terms of mill tech, an additional 10% land fire damage. And our last mission here is we just have to be on par with everybody in terms of tech. We have 75 absolutism and have reached tier 7 in government reforms, which we are already there. In fact, we're about to hit tier 9, so uh, I have to get the absolutism all the way up. I also want to see how my troops fare against the Ottoman guys. Uh, this will actually be a really good test to, to show how strong Songhai actually can be. Our right, first battle against the Ottomans using my troops. Mamluks have actually been like 1v1ing the Ottomans right now. Better discipline, morale, yep. The uh, military reactionaries taking out 15 discipline. That's, that's, that's pretty huge. Also... <laughs> I'm sure you guys just watched as I just annihilated the fort here in Sanap that took 16 days. That's ridiculous. Some of these forts, because they haven't upgraded them, or because of the military reactionaries, I'm able to take them so freaking fast. This one took five days. Hey, okay, and this is the peace deal we're going to do. We're going to make them release out Bulgaria, Albania, and Corfu. And that knocked the Ottomans down by like 100 death. So not a lot, but it, it's something. At least to start out with. All right, I think it's time we attack Castile again. They're about to attack Ayataya. I'm going to make him release out a few more nations. Just, again, just trying to lower the dev of all the nearby nations around me. 
Oh, would you look at that? Actually, uh, Milan and Hungary are all at war with uh, the Ottomans, so they're about to lose even more dev. Perfect. No. Nope. Oh, and I guess Poland's invading Bulgaria. I'm assuming that that means that they may end up invading the Ottomans immediately afterwards as well. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Win it. Oh, we're gonna lose this battle. No. Well, unless these guys make it. No, 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 no. This whole army's gonna get stack wiped. No. Oh. My whole army just got stack wiped because of Castile's navy. And also the Mamluk army did too. Oh, no. So we just defeated the Spanish army over here. Uh, I'm gonna send my navy out on a suicide mission so we can stack wipe their army. We finally made it across. Oh my god. But this time we're not gonna get stack wiped. I actually have a navy. Who knew boats were important so you could actually cross into the Straits of Gibraltar? Certainly not I, said the chairman. Okay, so finally we made Castillo release out Granada, a Catholic nation. Understandably so, because, I mean, all the stuff over here is, is all Catholic, but it's, it's just cursed. It's disgusting. That did lower their dev by a little bit, really not by much. I need to get the institution that's going to put me back up here to fourth. I also think it's finally time we break that alliance with France, so let's do that. Oh, look at that. The Russians actually were able to break free from the French. There's French Central Asia, which is just disgusting. But uh, yeah, they're fighting for their independence again from the French. Just perfect timing because we too are going to go ahead and attack France uh, with the aid of Great Britain. And we're just going to attack them for like these islands down here for Fernando Po. Alright, here we go fighting the French. They have 44 artillery pieces in this one army. Doing a ton of damage, but uh, yeah, we overran their lines. Not much they could do when, when you have like no infantry in your army. And I want to try and make pieces fast as possible. I literally just need these two provinces, which we're so close to getting. Okay, and I can actually get those two provinces, and that's it. So, thank you very much France for those. Uh, all I have to do now is just convert those, and I believe I complete the mission, convert West Africa, which is awesome. Don't have to worry about conquering any more West Africa. I actually don't have to worry about conquering anything anymore. Is Every single province I get claims on is now under my control. The only issue now is becoming a great power and getting the absolutism that I need. Uh, this one I need, I really need to just at bare minimum get to be the number three great power in the world. But finally, I got my 75 absolutism. We can now complete this so we no longer lose stability whenever we get a comet sighted. We get minus two national arrest and institution spread till the end of the game. And I just realized I actually have to complete this mission here, the Great Mosque of Jen. Uh, I have to get it up to tier 3. I didn't even realize I had that mission. Uh, so yeah, we, we gotta start investing some of our ducats into this uh, wonder over here. Alright, and after I converted these two islands, now I can officially complete this mission. Beacon of Muslim Faith until the end of the game. Talent of True Faith. Opinion of the same religion. Opinion of country from others of the same religion. And our lemma are a little bit more loyal. Okay, with the Great Mosque of Jen being done, you get Missionary missionary Strength versus Heathens. Monthly Piety Accelerator in favor of Legalism. And we could complete this mission, the Great Mosque of Jen. Where we have their side with the Ulema. Giving us 33 legalism or mysticism if we go with the demi, which uh, I'm going to go with legalism here. So I got an event revolution was brewing. What I didn't expect is that the Ottomans would actually turn into revolutionary Turkey. I mean, it only makes sense because they've been just constantly in debt the entire time. They were went bankrupt a couple times. And uh, yeah, we got revolutionary Turkey. They're guaranteed by the Commonwealth, and the Mamluks are kind of weak. Though I don't really expect them to really do much. I mean, they could only really pick on Georgia or Trebizond. I don't even think they could really have that many troops. 
the year is 1770 and i've had to play the game for like almost an additional 100 years i'm gonna be honest with you guys i was not able to complete this mission right here up until this point without the aid of vassal because of the way that i typically play eu4 which is at a slower pace um this mission here is kind of a little bit more challenging for me to achieve uh just because i play at that slower pace and also because i play for these videos within the confines of a mission tree if this was an actual song high game where i'm playing it just as i normally do i to be honest with you probably would have conquered most of iberia i for sure would own all of the Mamluks, like Egypt stuff, and all of East Africa here, and I might even be down here in the Congo at that point. But because it is mission tree only, I'm not allowed to do any of that, so th that made this mission a lot harder than it needed to be. And again, I did a lot of other missions and sidetrack kind of things and stuff, which diverted me away from being the fourth greatest power at one point. So let's go ahead and click on this mission. And that is the entire Song of High mission tree completed. Hope you guys really enjoyed this video. And if you did, please leave a like and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on any of my other mission tree only series and other E4 videos. I will see you guys in the next one. Chairman out.